Another JoJo's fight. Yippee. Hey, what's going on, you guys? My name is The Raptor, and welcome back to another one of my Death Battle prediction videos. And next time on Death Battle, after Scarlet Witch versus Atana, we have Jonathan from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure versus Tanjiro from Demon Slayer. Out of all the teased combatants for Season 9, I definitely thought that this fight was the most likely to be next. I didn't think it was going to be the Tetsuo fight or the Vegeta fight, since they're most likely going to be fighting Marvel characters, and I really didn't think they were going to have two Marvel characters in a row right after having two DC characters in a row that was just my thought and for the Boba Fett fight I don't know maybe they're saving Boba Fett for like May or something you know closer to Star Wars Day or the Kenobi release something like that either way I thought this was most likely and it was what we ended up getting so there we go this isn't the fight out of all like the confirmed slash teased slash speculated fights for season 9 that I'm the most excited for but it's still one I'm quite excited for I think it has a lot of potential to be a lot of fun you know just a good death battle episode in general and that's really all I want, you know? So I'm still looking forward to it. So with this being a JoJo's fight and all that, it really seems like no one can really agree on what scaling is fair or should be used, especially for the JoJo's character. The same could be said for Tanjiro to an extent, of course, but that's more so in the normal sense, like how versus debating is super subjective and all that. But when it comes to JoJo's in particular, you know, when you have a manga anime that's in multiple parts and you have some characters that exist in multiple parts, it can get kind of confusing. I will say that if you are the most lenient you could possibly be with Jonathan's scaling and give him scaling that doesn't even make any logical sense but still exists somewhere in JoJo's, then yeah, Jonathan would absolutely win. There's no question about that. But of course, it's not nearly that simple and Death Battle is not going to treat it that simply. You know, with this kind of fight, it's more important to look at what Death Battle is most likely going to say. That's really what the prediction is here, not what's most generally accepted around the community or what I personally believe is correct, at least necessarily. I mean, it's a death battle prediction, so I'm trying to predict what death battle is going to say above all else. So just to give some examples, if we're just looking at part one for Jonathan and that's it, then Jonathan is likely past the building level range as he was able to fight on par with Dio and eventually easily outmatch Tarkus, who once split open the face of a cliff with his raw strength. And when it comes to speed, Jonathan was able to outpace an explosion, putting his speed many, many, many times faster than the speed of sound. When it comes to Tanjiro, on the other hand, at his strongest states, he's probably around the multi-city block level or higher, based on the characters that he's fought and based on upscaling from other Demon Slayers, again, when he's at his strongest states. And when it comes to speed, he and other comparable characters are able to outpace characters like Zenitsu, for example, who once solidly outpaced Lightning. So, again, that puts Tanjiro around the massively hypersonic range. Again, it's a big range, but around there. So, again, you know, like, looking at these numbers in general, there don't seem to be huge differences when looking at it like this. You know, Tanjiro's stats might be a bit better, but they're not by huge margins or anything like that. However, the real complications come in when you start looking at how Jonathan could scale to feats and capabilities that exist outside of Part 1, which sounds a little weird at face value, but just let me explain. A lot of you guys probably know this thanks to Dio vs. Alucard, but Dio plays a major role in both Part 1 and Part 3 of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. And when Dio was still having trouble controlling Jonathan's body in part 3 because he stole Jonathan's body and was having trouble merging with it for a while, he was able to easily keep up with and defeat Joseph Joestar in combat, who previously was able to dodge a beam of light from the Red Stone and keep up with other light dodging characters. Now part 3 Joseph probably isn't quite as physically impressive as he was in part 2, you know, his younger self, but this was also technically a weaker version of Dio than when Dio fought Jonathan in part 1 because again he was still getting accustomed to the new body, and I believe that even while in this weakened state, Dio was able to somewhat react to light speed plus stands. Not fully, but like somewhat. So with all of this in mind, I don't really have that much of an issue believing that Jonathan could reach that light speed or light speed plus scaling if Dio at that point in time could as well. And while Dio was certainly able to stand up to characters as powerful as Star Platinum a lot better after he drank Joseph's blood and fully merged with Jonathan's body, he was still able to take 
take a fully powered hit from Star Platinum before that point, while he was still in that weakened state, albeit barely. And we know from Dio vs. Alucard just how powerful stands like the world and Star Platinum are. And again, if Jonathan was able to fight on par with a version of Dio who was arguably stronger than that version of Dio, then you could argue that Jonathan could potentially take a hit as powerful as that as well. He probably couldn't exert that amount of force though, since he was able to defeat Dio with the use of Hamon, which Dio was specifically weak to, but it is still logically scalable durability-wise if you want to go that route. Again, if you buy that scaling, which I can see some people not being super happy with, because that stuff comes outside of part one, which, you know, is what Jonathan is known for. You know, I can definitely understand that reasoning. And I want to apologize. I feel like I'm talking about Jonathan a lot more than I am with Tanjiro, but that's really because, you know, Jonathan's stats really depend on what direction you want to go in, while Tanjiro, at least in comparison, his stat range, his stat ranges are a bit more well-defined. But now is probably a good time to go over the characters' arsenals, both Tanjiro and Jonathan. So these characters are incredible martial artists and impressive strategists. They both have ways to increase their physical capabilities mid-fight and have limited healing. They can both control some of the elements to some extent, although Tanjiro does seem to overall be more versatile in this regard and has better resistances to those kinds of attacks in general. Tanjiro can also sense the presence of others, smell people's thoughts, and use precognition to a certain extent. He has amazing stamina and willpower, which a lot of people know him for, and of course he has his sword, which he's very proficient with, and has mastered many forms of combat with, meaning that he has a lot of different versatile and strong attacks that he can choose from. And when it comes to Jonathan specifically, he actually carries around his own sword called Luck and Pluck, which he is quite proficient with, and he also has access to the Hammond technique, as I mentioned before, which is pretty much responsible for some of his greater or crazier physical attributes, like healing, physical enhancements, and some of his signature moves. It's also super effective against characters who are weak to sunlight because it's powered by sunlight, but even then, it's been shown damaging characters' inner organs, and these are characters that don't have such a weakness. So as a bit of a hexier move, it's definitely a useful skill to have. So obviously, there's a lot more I could look at with both of these characters if I really wanted to dive deep into it, but after going over all of the general stuff, I'm honestly kind of torn. I feel like Tanjiro is more versatile than Jonathan overall, but I still want to say that both of the characters have abilities that could be very effective against each other, and I feel like the whole course of this fight could really just depend on what scaling Death Battle decides to implement for Jonathan. If they just confine Jonathan's capabilities to what's shown in part one and what he's done in part one, then Tanjiro would definitely have a much better chance of winning, and he might even definitively win. But when you start looking at base part 3 Dio as a way to judge Jonathan's abilities, then that would naturally put him way higher than before. I personally do think there's enough evidence to place Jonathan at that light speed or light speed plus range because there's so many of those feats across JoJo's and Jonathan can logically scale to some of those characters. I do think Death Battle is also going to be willing to buy that scaling. I could be wrong, but that's just my thought. In terms of Jonathan being able to take a hit from Star Platinum because Dio was able to in his weakened state, I think, you know, that's a bit harder to argue, but nonetheless, that is still something you could logic out. That's something that still has a basis based on how powerful Dio was at that time, and Jonathan being able to take on Dio in part one, etc, etc, you know? However, I don't really think you can place Jonathan that much higher without trying to use scaling that really doesn't have a strong basis, which again, if you do that, then yeah, Jonathan wins, no question, but obviously that's not how it works. And I want to make this clear, this video is not trying to convince anybody of anything thing if you happen to buy something else. This is just me trying to figure out or trying to predict what Death Battle is going to go with in terms of scaling, which can be so difficult sometimes. I will say though that if Death Battle does say that Jonathan is as durable as Dio was when Dio got hit by Star Platinum before fully merging with Jonathan's body, then I think that Jonathan is most likely going to win. Because he's got the speed, he can kill Tanjiro with Hamon or his other abilities, and Tanjiro is going to have a really hard time trying to deal damage to Jonathan even if Tanjiro is technically more powerful. However, if they don't give Jonathan that kind of durability, then I think Tanjiro is probably stronger and tougher overall. However, thanks to Jonathan's abilities like Hamon, you know, I think it's fair to say that both of the characters could still kill each other, like they still have what it takes to be able to put the other one down, and if it comes to who can land the killing blow first, then I still want to say Jonathan because he's still the faster fighter. Really, the only way that I can see Tanjiro winning this fight 
great is if Death Battle just confines Jonathan to what's shown in part one. And while I know that some people do believe that that is the way to go, like that's the right thing to do in this kind of situation, I don't think that's what Death Battle is going to do. I think they're going to scale Jonathan to higher JoJo's levels to some extent, whether it's what I said in this video or something completely different. And if they decide to do that, then I think Jonathan just has more going for him overall. I'm very hesitant about all of this, by the way, because I could just be putting my faith in something that doesn't even show up in the episode. I could definitely see Tanjiro winning, you know, based on the circumstances, based on the scaling that they use for both characters. But based on what I do think Death Battle will do with the characters i'm leaning more towards jonathan at least for now i'm very hesitant but I'm gonna go with Jonathan. But anyway, guys, that is the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to give this video a like, comment your comments down below, subscribe if you could too, that would be amazing. But no matter what you guys do, thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. So yeah, I'm really excited for this episode. I hope you guys are excited for it too. And that's it for me. I will see all of you guys in the next video. Peace out.